So I'm going to talk about work I did uh, with my supervisor, Matt Perther, um, at Queen Mary University of London on strongly incremental repair detection. So I'm going to start by uh, overviewing the problem that we face with self-repairs, then go through our system STIR, strongly incremental repair detection, um, introduce some evaluation measures for the repair detection task, um, go over our experiments and results, and then conclude. So the phenomena we're concerned with are like the following examples. But one of the, the two things that I'm really, our situation is just a little bit kind of the opposite of that. And you know it's like your, I mean, employments are contractual by nature anyway. So these kinds of phenomena are absolutely pervasive in natural, real human speech. And if we want to build dialogue systems uh, robust to these, then we need to do something about them. Um, we can be helped by this um, annotation scheme that was pr produced by Liz Schweiberg's work on uh, corpus analysis of repair, where you have uh, this tripartite structure of a repair with a reparandum phase. Um, in this case, in John likes, uh, loves, Mary, the reparandum is likes. Um, an interregnum, which is something that bridges, um, it's a filler or edit term between the reparandum and the repair that repairs the reparandum. And then Mary afterwards continues as a fluent utterance. So you can then use this annotation scheme on the examples I just showed, and you can get different types, such as repeats, substitutions, and deletes, which have different types of discourse effect and meaning. But why do we care in this community about this kind of thing? Well, the traditional approach to this is to treat disfluencies, including self-repairs, as noise in the, in the signal, which we want to remove before we do some more uh, interesting um, parsing and uh, interpretation of the utterance. So it goes from noisy utterance to clean utterance, and then we get the meaning of the clean utterance. So that's a good approach, right? Um, we want to get proper uh, meaning in our dialogue systems. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to say no, that's actually not a good approach um, for several reasons. And what we want to move more towards is something like this, where um, ASR will propose some hypothesis to disfluency detection, and then disfluency detection might suggest some re-ranking um, of the ASR hypothesis, and then um, the disfluency detector will in fact apply some kind of structure tagging or classification to the, uh, the repairs, and then um, the natural language understanding module will interpret the meaning of the disfluency in the repair. And what I'm gonna focus on today is these disfluency structure tags that are a part of this whole process. So there's good evidence from psycholinguistics that people are actually using the meaning of the repair in a way that um, is significant. So um, subjects are quicker to react to pick the purple square in these instruction giving domains where you hear pick the yellow uh, purple square from the onset of P than from say pick the R purple square. So people are using the referendum and the difference between the repair and the referendum. Um, to make decisions on a very, very fast level. So they have meaning, and dialogue systems should not filter out the referendum or any part of the disfluency structure. But in standard practice, um, the uh, disfluency task only focuses on referendum word detection, but, so, but we are interested in the whole repair structure assignment and eventually the meaning of these things. So that's the meaning of self-repairs. Another part of... Um, the problem I want to address is the incrementality of self-repair detection. So here um, we have on the left a, a non-incremental dialogue system, uh, the schematic for its processing through its modules, and on the right we have a more incremental system. So you'll notice that the um, non-incremental system works on the entirety of its um, input and then produces an output, sends that to the next one, and it goes down like this whereas the incremental one can work on partial outputs from each process, and this will lead to more interactive dialogue systems if we could do something more like the right-hand side. So incremental performance, how do we uh, 
evaluate how good something is incrementally. Um, well, we've got things to look at, such as timing. So we want low latency when we're detecting repairs. Um, we want to look at um, good quality of evolution of the output over time. So um, we want good incremental accuracy or responsiveness, if you like. And we want um, stable output. So we don't want something to be continually changing its output. And we want this to be fast and computationally non-complex. So the problem statement is that we want a system that achieves interpretation of repair, so applies repair structure tags rather than just random word detection. It has strong incrementality. That means it gives the best results as early as it can from the detection, and it's computationally fast. And hopefully some way of controlling this trade-off between the incremental performance and the overall performance of detecting the repair structures. So I just mentioned the the previous approach closest to what I'm going to talk about, which is um, the schwarz et uh, noisy channel model, which is an incremental version of the Johnson, Johnson and Charniak noisy channel model of repair detection, which essentially uses um, string alignment um, as its channel model, um, it detecting rough copies between the repair and the referendum phases, because these can often be the same and uh, often repeats. Um, and they achieve uh, a good utterance final F score of referendum detection, and they introduce some incremental measures of repair detection, which are interesting um, given the motivation I just talked about, which are time to detection, so how long on average does it take for the detector to find out that something's a repair, and then delayed accuracy, which is like a delayed um, F score, like an incremental F score as you go through, not just the F score of the whole utterance on repair tags, on referendum tags. Um, but it doesn't do so well on these measures, and I, I um, think we can do better. And it's complex, it's uh, ON to the 5. So why uh, does it not perform so well in terms of incrementality? Um, well, the string alignment process is inherently non-incremental. It uses the entire utterance to see where the best alignments are. And actually, these alignments in repairs are very sparse, apart from um, you, you've got a lot of repeats. About 50% of these are repeats um, from the re repair to the referendum. But after that, there's a very steep tail. Um, so instead, I'm going to propose using local measures of fluency for, uh, to uh, improve this problem of latency and improve the speed of detection. And this does not rely on string alignment, but instead information theoretic measures of language models, which is in line with the sort of information density approach to language processing. And uh, it's minimally complex. So <clears throat> to overview our system, these are the uh, structures that we're going to detect, but we're going to detect the boundary points of the referendum interregnum repair. And so this is this um, tag set below. Um, the example John likes or loves Mary. Uh, but we'll also um, detect edit terms on their own, which are not part of a repair structure. So schematically, the repair detection works like this, where we've got the input word at the top, the processing graph in the middle, and the output tag. So John, we have no reason to believe this is a repair. Likes, still no reason to believe this is a repair. Uh, we know this is an edit term. It still might not be a repair, but we should detect it's an edit term immediately. Loves, bang, there's the uh, repair detection principal part. We know that there's a, um, a repair there. Um, so the output tag repair start can be outputted. And then we search back for the start of the, of the referendum um, in a backward search process. So now we know that likes is, in fact, the referendum when we've, when we've searched back. And then finally, we... Um, realize that this is, in fact, um, uh, the end of the repair and loves really replaces likes, and after this we'll get a fluent continuation, and we get this. So this is this um, in strongly incremental way we're going to detect these repairs. So how do we do this in practice? Well, we use um, enriched n-gram language models, where instead of just using, not just, say, smooth probability, we use some more enriched features using insights for the long tradition of information theoretic measures of, of n-gram models. So surprisal, for example, um, we have the second one, weighted mean log prob, which factors out lexical frequency. Um, it's like the syntactic log odds ratio as well. And then we have uh, entropy, H, which is simply the Shannon entropy of 
possible continuations given the context, and then we can do some distributional measures of, um, uh, of similarity with KL divergence. Um, so we use a lexical model and a, a POS model, and they, these do not use values here. So we're not looking at word values, we're just looking at measures and see how far we can get with this approach. So you can see why this is useful when you look at this dip here in a repair start. So for the sentence, I haven't had any good, really very good experience with childcare. Um, on the really, you see this sharp drop, which wouldn't be captured by any string similarity. It's simply a drop in fluency. Um, we can also extend the notion of rough copy dependency, which uh, the Johnson, Charniak, and Schwarz et al. approach is used to more gradient measures. And we can characterize information content of the onset of repair in terms of entropy and use parallelism judgments in terms of distributional similarity measures that I just talked about. So repair reparandum correspondence can be seen as a gradient parallelism. So the data we use um, basically as a trigram model on the switchboard training data, um, which uh, is cleaned of, of repair and, dis and, and, and uh, reparandum and edit terms, and then we have an edit term language model as well, which stores all the things like are uh, and you know and like that happen um, as edit terms and switchboard as another bigram language model. And the architecture of this looks like this. There's a pipeline of classifiers, um, whereby first of all, um, it will detect edit terms. If it does detect an edit term, the rest of the pipeline won't be accessed if it, um, if it doesn't, then it goes on to repair start detection. Um, and if a repair start is found, this, is, this goes on to reparandum start detection in this third circle along here. And this searches back for the reparandum, as I was saying. And then finally, the repair end um, is classified. And all of these uh, repair hypotheses are stored on a stack. Um, and this is done strictly word by word. And inside one of these guys, you have um, a random forest classifier that gets its features from the language model, as I just described, but it also has a cost function um, which you can manipulate um, in order to change the balance between precision and recall in the training. And um, so it makes it cost sensitive, and you can actually use this to trade off incremental performance and final accuracy, as I'll explain when I just go through the individual classifiers quickly. So, first of all, Ed. The edit term detection um, uses, uh, it, it helps the rest of the pipeline considerably, and it's based of the WML measure of words in the edit term language model versus their WML in the fluent language model. So quite simple features. And it, just using this, it does very well. Um, it's not the focus of this talk, but it gets 0.938 on all edit term words. Um, I mean, and you know, sometimes misclassified, or partly misclassified. Now the main, uh, classifier that we need to be concerned with is this repair start detector, because this means if the more accurate this is, the best the you know the better input the rest of the pipeline has to work on. Um, and as I was saying, you get this dip in in these uh, in rich probability measures, which is nice. Um, and if you do feature ranking on uh, the features it uses, you see that the language model features are actually more useful than the alignment ones in general. And you can fiddle around with the, the cost function for this repair start detection. If you punish false negatives, obviously you'll get higher recall, but at the expense possibly of accuracy. And now the re referendum start detection, which is this backward search process to the beginning of likes here. So this seems to show the noisy channel intuition is correct, given the features we use, which shows there's a boost in um, several measures when you get the right referendum start word rather than the wrong one. And it also uh, uses this parallelism measures to actually um, detect something like the rough copy dependency, but as I was saying, something more general than that between the referendum start and the repair start. And this really, the re referendum start detector is where you can control the complexity of the whole system. In that, if you just allow a search to seven words back, which is fine for the majority of repairs because they're all very short, really, on average. Um, if you find a hypothesis, add the referendum start to the stack. Um, complexity is linear, but in practice, uh, as most utterances are, um, 
under seven words. Um, this is sort of triangular because you search back over the whole, uh, the whole utterance as it's consumed, but you can control the stack capacity as in how many repair hypotheses you put on the stack, um, uh, uh, and this allows you to limit the search space. And finally, the referendum, the repair end, sorry, um, where we want to know that loves is in fact replacing likes and nothing else is replacing likes. Um, we use several features of, uh, re uh, of parallelism again, including referendum repair difference, which is the difference between the WML of an utterance with the referendum phase replacing the repair phase and the WML of the utterance cleaned of referendum, i.e. Uh, that of John loves Mary and John likes Mary. And this is the best feature. And this does structural classification. So how are we going to evaluate our system? We can use the normal evaluation of F-score on referendum words, which we'll call FRM. Uh, but we're also interested in structure assignment if we really want to get towards the meaning of these repairs. Um, we want to look at the incremental performance, so timing, which we can use the time to detection measure. Evolution over time, that's how stable the output of our repair tags are. And for this, we can use uh, delayed accuracy and edit overhead, which I'll mention briefly what that is now, and computational complexity. So <clears throat> for this, we do a simple number of classifications uh, made in, in the system per word, which gives us a, an approximation to computational complexity. So edit overhead is essentially this. It's about um, the proportion of output edits which are bad or, or use, useless. So here you can see in red, um, these, uh, these are bad. Um, because they're not the correct tags, um, and they had to be added and then revoked. So in total, there's two bad ones which are then revoked, so that means four bad edits here. And so the ideal edit overhead is, in fact, zero, um, and we don't punish um, anything, any re referendum words that get found before the repair start is found. Um, so we, allow, we can get, in fact, zero in an ideal system. So <clears throat> we use the standard... In our experiments, we use the standard division for disfluency detection um, on the Penn Tree Bank files. Uh, we experiment with 320 different uh, cost settings, um, and we experiment with different stack capacities of how many uh, repair hypotheses you can put on the stack per word. Um, and our best setting for overall accuracy marginally improves Fartz et al. Um, at 0.779 on referendum words. But we're also interested in the overall structure, as I was saying, this is a novel metric. Um, and actually, this is quite difficult for humans to do, um, to actually apply the correct structure, as I found in lots of annotation work on this. And timing improves greatly. Um, we, we have immediate, strongly incremental detection, as the paper title suggests, directly upon consumption of the repair start, we get the, the detection on average. So one word from the repair start, if you like. Our ev evolution over time metrics, um, it varies across settings, but um, the best is very stable at under 1% of bad edits. And the delayed accuracy improves a lot. So you can see how our curves um, go up quite steeply here, the blue and the green one. So after two or three words, we're almost up at, um, at three words, we're almost up at our final accuracy. Uh, computational complexity, we limit this, as I was saying, by the stack size um, to, cube, to quadratic and cubic uh, complexity, but in practice this is really fast, so um, the processing overhead, it's, only, uh, it's about 1.23 uh, classifications on average per word. And finally, do we get a trade-off that we wanted to <coughs> trade off um, good final accuracy with good incremental accuracy? Um, in the best final accuracy setting, we do suffer with this high or bad edit overhead and processing overhead, so it's unstable and slower. Um, and this requires sort of high recall in the first classifier. But, um, and in the most efficient and stable ones, um, the overall accuracy goes down a bit. But we do find a good trade-off setting, um, which has a fairly good overall referendum rep word detection um, at 0.754, but very low edit overhead and very low PO, which means it's very stable and very efficient. 
So finally, um, to conclude, I've presented a system STIR, which can experiment with final accuracy and incremental, incremental performance trade-offs. It achieves state-of-the-art latency and incremental performance in detecting repairs. It detects the entire repair structure and doesn't delete the referendum, as previous um, approaches have implicitly. Um, it does not use lexical or um, POS values, but information theoretic measures instead. And um, as it's strongly incremental, it should be useful for dialogue systems. And this is why we're currently in, in, in integrating it with incremental ASR. Thank you. Do we have any questions for the speaker? Uh, thank you for the talk. Um, I was interested in the fact that you are not using string similarity in any way. Um, do you feel it's not necessary, or is it? Uh... Well, <clears throat> essentially, um, some of these uh, measures actually subsume string matching. Um, we do use some some simple ones, like is the last. Is the last word a repeat of the, pre of, of the previous one? So we use two or three in each classifier. Um, but in terms of overall string matching, using a window, say, which is quite a common approach, um, you can subsume this kind of similarity with something more like distributional similarity. And in fact, say, uh, KL divergence of two repeats is actually zero, right? Um, there's no difference in the possible continuations after two repeats. So actually, you do get string matching but you can generalize to something a bit more uh, interesting by, by using these, these gradient measures. That's a really good question. Quick question. The choice of going seven words back. Yeah. Um, where does that come from? I may have missed that. Oh, sure. Um, well, basically, you get a big... Uh, uh, sort of power law drop from in terms of referendum length uh, from one onwards. So in, gen in general, people try to be as local as possible when repairing. So actually, there's hardly any over eight. There's probably a, a couple of um, rep referenda actually over seven words. So you don't really miss much. Um, you could, in, you could in theory, um, make the search all the way back, and that's why I said. In Basically, it's, it's, it's quadratic, the complexity, because you have to search over all the strings you've, you, you've seen so far, all the substrings you've seen so far. But um, yeah, in theory, you could actually let it go all the way back, but um, just limits, in practical terms, limits the, uh, the complexity, basically. Okay. Um, my uh, my sure. comment was more that I would... Sure. Um, <laughs> that I would actually think that it would be very rare to even go that far back, that it would oh, likely to be okay. far more local, and yeah, I think that's I what the results show. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. I did experiment, experiment with a few five and six, and um, so <clears throat> from a training perspective, it's quite good to have some, uh, some more bad examples, if you'd like, um, some true positives. So actually, it just it boosts the amount of training you get if you add these... Um, you know, these other examples up to seven words. But yeah, I don't think it would radically go down if you use, say, five or four, really. But it does help a little bit, I think. Thank you. Okay, I have a sure. Uh, for the uh, efficiency, you, you mm -hmm. were saying the, I mean, worst case complexity and, Q, and five for the previous work yeah, and then... Yeah. So I was expecting at the end some comparison in terms of like milliseconds or some kind. Yeah, so do I you don't actually have their system available to do those kind of check. I'd like to. Yeah, I th I absolutely. Please. I think it would be good to do that. Um, as our, our system's kind of linear in the size of the, of the vocabulary, but it doesn't search the whole vocabulary. Um, but, but yes, in the worst case, because of the search technique, it's uh, cubic, perhaps. But... Um, in practice, it's very fast. But yeah, I'd like to like to investigate yeah. that more thoroughly. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Okay. Well, let's thank 
uh, our speaker and all the speakers is the end of the session. Thank you.